a she already has an idea to make money as she travels, and I am going to try to help her make her idea a little bit more formed and mature so she can work work forward. Now we might have some other people joining our call. So if they do, then we'll introduce them as they come. But Rachel, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Rachel and I were already talking for like 20 minutes kind of about this kind of stuff. So we, we've already been introduced. But um, we should give her a, a big shout out too for kind of opening up her project and herself in front of everybody. And um, you know, that's, uh, that's cool. Before we get started, let me actually just invite, I forgot to invite those other ladies that could be joining us to our second um, uh, our second uh, little hangout we have going here. Right. There we go. Okay. So, okay, Rachel. So, before we get started and talk about Rachel's project, if you came here to, to get help with an idea to make money as you travel, what Rachel and I have already discussed is um, her idea, which she's got a good idea. I'll let her introduce it in just a second. But um, what we did is we talked about... Um, I drew this handy dandy little drawing here. <laughs> I was Rachel was ahead of me. I was gonna help her find her idea, but she already has it. But um, what I would basically help someone do is find out um, kind of the intersection of what they love to do, what they're good at doing, and then what people are willing to pay for. And I feel like with those three steps, everyone has something that they can offer with sort of the open landscape that's available online and being able to set up a project and in a relatively short time build up a small business that can allow you to travel. Um, so Rachel, why don't you um, say your name, say where you're at right now for everybody and then um, say what idea that you want to work on that we've been talking about. Um, my name is Rachel Fleming and I'm in Birmingham, Alabama right now and my idea is to create um, kind of like a health blog that helps people um, adapt an organic lifestyle or a toxin-free lifestyle and just take their life to um, an optimal level of health, really. Awesome. Uh, Rachel and I were talking about how a health blogs or health, the health industry, if we wanted to call it that, is one of, it's, it's a solid industry to be in. If we're talking specifically about um, how someone would be able to make money from their project. Um, now, you had a question, Rachel. We, we're, what were we talking about before we started uh, this call again? I know we were kind of like on towards something. Um, we were talking about kind of um, finding a way to make my idea more unique to the health community because so many people offer some kind of service like this. Um, there are a lot of people on YouTube who have different ways of kind of helping people achieve better health and I need to have like a unique way of doing it as well and also offer something that maybe the other people in the health community are not offering. Yeah, yeah. Well let's let's start off um, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking A, like how can we make your idea more specific as in like what area of health would you like to help people on? Um, I don't know, that's kind of hard to do. I guess um, implementing or living a toxin-free lifestyle is one that I could probably hone in on pretty well. Um, losing weight would be one. Um, okay. But that's so, um, so common, I feel like it would be hard 
to offer it to people? Well, let's let's um, not limit any idea right now. You know okay. what I mean? Let's just kind of like any idea is on the table. Maybe later on we'll say like, okay, there's too much comp competition in okay. that. You know, but we'll just throw out some ideas. So what what are some other specific sectors or specific topics you could focus on that you're interested within the health health field? Okay. Um let's see. Living organically. Um yeah. how like um learning how to shop for the most nutritious foods. Okay. Um how to create some of your own products, um, like your own, I guess, like uh, like replacements for things that normally have toxins, like um, deodorants or shampoos or conditioners mm -hmm. or like scrubs, you know, bath style products. Okay. Kind of like creative how-to kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I will lose weight through juicing specifically. Um, okay. How to create other things in your own home, like uh, kombucha, which is kind of like a fermented health drink. Mm -hmm. um. We lost Rachel, everybody. The Whole Foods uh, over there in Alabama must um, <laughs> must uh, have have some funky Wi-Fi. I was losing her earlier today, um, as well. So um, there she is. She's back again. <laughs> I was describing to everyone that this has been happening, so yeah. they're cool. Don't worry. Okay. But um, so you you had said kombucha. Yeah. What other ideas do you have? Um, helping people understand food politics and why they're important and how they affect the environment and pretty much the rest of the world. All right, you got some great topics here too. And what we're um, what we're doing is we are um, what are we doing? We're trying to to narrow down your audience so that it's it's pretty hard to set up a general health blog or a general organic blog and be able to compete because some people have been doing it for years. They have probably more money than you do um, yes. to like <laughs> hire a bunch of writers and um, cover all the topics. So it's a lot easier just to hone in on one specific aspect, and then you will be the you know the um, let's see the juicing uh, make your own juices blog you know for example but um, so and these are great ideas it's obvious that you uh, you know what you're talking about here so. <laughs> what other um, ideas do you have uh, um, how to treat certain ailments through organic foods okay. or holistically I guess you could say um, okay Yeah, I think that about covers it. That's all I can think of off the top of my head right now. That's a great list. I mean, you just knocked off um, ten things, approximately nine things. So that is a solid list. Um, so now, what we would do is we would go into this list and choose the top three, the three that maybe you're most drawn to, um, the ones that sound the most interesting, the one that that you feel are the best ideas. Um, do you want me to read back through your list? I wrote yeah. them down. Okay. So we have toxin-free living, which that is a little bit general. Is there yeah. a way that we could we and we could go into each of these and make them more specific too? You know. So mm -hmm. is there a way that we could make that more specific, or is there another way to word it that it is more specific and I'm just maybe misunderstanding? Um, I don't know. It involves kind of like. A Making sure you get um, really clean water, um, organic foods, or beyond organic foods, and um, have really clean air, and don't use products on your skin that are toxic, which like a lot of mainstream products are. So it involves like those different elements. Okay, so it'd be like a toxin-free lifestyle, covering food, um, water, air, skin. Okay, that, that, that makes more sense to me. Losing weight. Was there anything specific with, with losing weight? Yes. Um, I guess getting people to understand um, or understand how to manage their blood sugar levels. So a lot of people 
um, are on this up and down roller coaster of caffeine, sugar, and all these stimulating foods, and they don't understand that you have to remove the sugar and the caffeine as stimulants and keep yourself on kind of like an even keel in order to um, maintain, um, I guess, it cause a good feeling like you have constant energy so that you can eat fewer calories with maximum nutrition to lose weight. So it's a lot right. of those lines. Okay. Awesome. Um, your next one was living organically? Yes. Um, I guess that really goes along with a lot of the toxin-free lifestyle mm -hmm. habits, um, but also kind of like living locally as well, like you know, spending more time going to your farmer's markets and meeting with farmers, um, mm -hmm. eating the local produce basically, and awesome. raw dairy or local dairy, things like that. Yeah, all of these are good, and all of these can be talked about probably on your blog. Um, so, so these are great. Um, shopping for the most nutritious foods. Right. Um, That's pretty specific. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking something along the lines of like a product comparison blog because, for example, coconut water. There are so many yeah. different types of coconut water, and in the context of toxic free living, well, you probably don't want to get it in a plastic bottle. And you probably don't want to get it in a aluminum can, but, you know, that's usually most of the things that are offered. So I can help people understand the differences between the different products and in terms of, you know, what's best for you in terms of um, coconut water, like if it's pasteurized or if it's raw. If it's raw, obviously, it has the most nutrients retained and it's better for you mm -hmm. versus um, the types of containers that come in. Like, is an aluminum can really worth it? Like, how toxic is it? Um, is that something you want to be drinking on a regular basis, or are you better off just buying your own coconuts and doing your own thing? Boom. All right. <laughs> you got, I mean, you got some great knowledge. I'm already thinking. Um, <laughs> Rachel had expressed an, a fear earlier on in our call about um, he didn't go to school for health, um, which I feel like is a common fear before people start an internet project. And I, I, I didn't get a chance to say, but a lot of times what will happen is. Um, you know, let's say you start up your blog, and in a year, now maybe like the New York Times links to an article that you wrote because you know your blog has risen, and if they search like coconut water reviews, now they're finding Rachel, right? And now you've been featured in the New York Times, and so there are other ways to establish expertise and credibility by just coming. You know, it's obvious that you have credibility, um, so. We got a. I got two of you now. <laughs> there's, there's two. One's, one's a robot. It's just like completely still. But um, um, did I lose you there for a second? Is that why? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. No wonder. I, I, I kept talking. I didn't even realize. And then you just jumped back into the call. <laughs> but um, yeah, what I was saying was, um, you know, by having a blog, you can establish expertise um, through getting linked to by popular, uh, you know, let's say like uh, the New York Times was the example I had used earlier. Um, let's say they saw your coconut water review, you know, and uh, we're writing a piece about coconut water and now you're featured in the New York Times. Um, or let's say um, a popular organic magazine, you know, you wanted to write a post for them and then you could show them your project and be like, hey, I'm a writer at this, you know. And so now you're featured in this magazine, you know. So there's there's a different way to go about it than going to school. Right. So let's keep, go through the rest of these. We got um, create products, um, organic health products. Yeah, like um, one thing I kind of do is make healthy alternatives. I guess like bath scrubs, for instance. It's hard to find ones that are really good that are completely toxic free. So like I make my own um, like coconut oil organic sugar scrub which yeah. works really well. So things kind of like that, although I don't really have a really developed arsenal of those types of things yet. Okay, cool. No, but that's a good start. And then you have juicing and kombucha. Yeah. Which I guess kind of goes along with food products, but are more specific. Uh. <laughs> we lost Rachel again, everybody. I'll just... Uh, I'll talk about kombucha. I love kombucha. It's pretty tasty. Um, that little <laughs> googly thing is kind of... Uh, I'm telling everybody about kombucha since we're gone for a second. <laughs> I love it. 
But uh, that I still that little uh, you know that little soft little jellyfish thing always kind of makes me. Oh yeah. <laughs> but uh, I chug it down anyways. Yeah, maybe I could change that. Come start my own kombucha company. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, but um, for juicing, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of common because I know there's YouTube personalities that already do that very well. Mm -hmm. So if I did something like that, it would probably be combined with something else. I think. Like just okay. more of the organic lifestyle, or maybe like a weight loss thing. I feel okay. like it could be implementable there, but probably not standalone. Okay. Um, uh, and then food politics and the environment. Yeah, like um, a lot of people don't understand that the choices that they make, like to eat conventional meat, how it really affects the environment um, in terms of the crops that the cows are fed. For instance, they're usually fed something conventional, and when that happens, well, they use pesticides, and that affects the environment. We're breaking up a little bit, Rachel. Yeah. I um I lost the last part of that. After the cows um, the cows get fed <laughs> conventional foods. Yeah. So if they're fed conventional foods, and usually it's grain, um, that actually decreases the nutritional quality that you're going to get because it's actually more nutritious. If they eat their natural diet, because it um, gives you a higher amount of CLAs and omega threes, which are essential for your health, and a lot of people don't realize that. So, not only is the environment impacted in a negative way, but you're also also suffering nutritionally from a societal standpoint. <laughs> nice, awesome. Okay, or I mean, that's not nice and awesome that that's happening, but it's nice <laughs> and awesome that you know that it's happening and can talk about it. <laughs> yeah. And then treat ailments um, with organic foods. Yeah, like. Um, for example, cancer um, can be treated with turmeric or and ginger, and a lot of people don't realize that those have um, chemotherapeutic and preventative effects. Or just switching to an all organic lifestyle or beyond organic lifestyle, as um, some companies call it, um, actually enables enables people to get rid of many ailments just because they're eliminating toxins from the lifestyle and using things that have natural healing powers. Awesome. Okay, so so those that was the list that we had. Um, out of that list, do any of those stand out? Like you immediately feel called towards them? Yeah. I don't know. I've I've always really liked food politics and. Okay. Uh, what were you gonna say? Uh, and the toxin-free lifestyle. Um, I feel really drawn to that because I'm always striving to do that in my everyday life. Mm -hmm. And also, kind of like a weight loss um, plan or healthy living plan, I guess, mm -hmm. that allows you to reach optimal health is a really strong interest. Okay. Um, awesome. Um, anyone else that you're kind of up in the air on, or do those three seem like the strongest you feel most called to those? I feel like those are the most, or the strongest. Cool. I, I feel good about all of those too. And when so when I when I look at this list, so we have food politics, toxin lifestyle, and weight loss um, with an organic lifestyle. I feel like the toxin lifestyle could tie into weight loss too. We could kind of add that in, like living toxin free to lose weight. Okay. Yeah. One thing people are really drawn that. to is is losing weight. You know, it's just um. It's an easy draw, you know, just kind of like making money online, you know, like losing weight. People are drawn to it. <laughs> Go through that, then you can then, then teach them things. But um, they could also be separate parts too, like the toxin lifestyle could just focus on living clearer um, by, by not having toxins. Um, yeah. Now here's what, here's what you would do, okay? You would, so you have three potentials. What you're going to do is like, you're going to look for people that are doing along the same lines as what you want to do. So you're going to go do research on each of those topics. And the best way to do research, you might want to write this stuff down because this is going to be yeah. your homework. Is, um, so you have three topics. You're going to go on Amazon.com where all the books are and you're going to research each of those topics and you're going to see if anyone wrote books on those topics. 
That's one phase of your research. Second phase of your research is you're going to Google each of those topics, and you're going to look to see if there's advertising on those topics. Do you know when you're searching Google what which parts of the page are advertising? Yeah, kind of like I think the like the banner ads and then the Google codes that they have on the side, the coded ads. That's right. Yeah. So you're going to want to see the reason why you're looking at Amazon is if someone has written a book about it, they've probably gone through a publisher that would only have funded their book if the idea was a solid idea. So if someone wrote a book on it, there's a good chance that this idea has some legs that you could then make into a blog. Okay. The same goes with Google AdWords. So if someone is paying their money to advertise these keywords that you typed in, and you might need to kind of try some different words to see, you know, get in the head of like what you're searching if you were looking for your blog. Right. Um, and then and then see if someone's willing to pay money to advertise on these keywords, then it's probably a good idea. Um, and it could make some money. If no one is advertising on it, then you might think that this idea probably isn't going to be able to make any money. Or okay. maybe like too far in the future, or would cost too much money of yours that it's going to take too long to invest in. Okay. So, so those are two good ways to figure out if your idea is willing to make money. Now the third thing that you want to do is once you kind of get that data, is you want to go find someone who's going to be like your idol slash like you're going to steal their idea, you know, or not steal their <laughs> idea, but their model, you know, like right. look at like what did they do to make money? Are they writing a book? Are they? Do they have a video course? Um, are they just advertising their YouTube videos? And really, kind of start to dive in. And I would get like three to five to ten people, and I would look at their models, and then I take what you think is going to work best for you. Okay. And I feel like that's like that's a great start um, to like get started, and then from there. Then you can, you know, I don't even want to go into that because, um, right. <laughs> you know, we'll just overwhelm it. But, I mean, like, that's a great start. You can see if your idea, someone, if people are paying money for your idea now, then there's a good chance you can jump in there too. Like, having some competition is actually, like, a good thing. It means, like, there's a market there. Right. Um, and then just looking for people that you can imitate and, and um, see what they're doing to kind of model what they're doing um, for your own stuff. Okay. What about questions? Do you have any questions? I think I already have some ideas of like who I can look at and what I can do there. You're probably are you already following some people who um you probably already ha have some ideas from some people? Yeah, like um there's some people on YouTube who I follow and there are um also people from like a chiropractor school that have a lot of good information that I follow. And then a lot of people kind of like in the online health community, I guess you could say, that I've been following for a while. But awesome. yeah. They don't really um, log, so uh, hopefully I can like put something in there that would be a little different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you definitely can can put something in there to be a little different. Unless it's like just completely um, you know, like tons of people, but I, I doubt that the stuff that you're talking about to me seems like it's it's still like catching on, and yeah. um, you could find a way to differentiate yourself. Um, do you feel like that's enough information so far for you to work on, or do you feel like there's still some questions that we can dive further into? No, I feel like that's a lot to work on. Um, I really didn't think about researching book topics very well. Like I pick up reading here and there on the topics, but I didn't really think about researching that so well that I could French just myself. So that really helps a lot. Great. Yeah. I've found um, another thing with Amazon is to look through a lot of times you can look through the um, the chapters or the you know, like the beginning of the book. Yeah. And if you find a book that is similar to something that you're interested in look through the chapter titles and you could potentially see like a structure for how you could teach people um, thinking that these people have again like researched these books <laughs> oh golly the internet it's kooky but um, 
for you guys, yeah, if you, if you have an idea and you want to um, decide a way to teach it, I'll wait for Rachel. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's not your fault. What I was saying was looking at the chapter titles, you can get a lot of good information about like how you could then go about teaching the topic or looking for different topic titles, categories within that. And that's a little yeah. bit further, but you know, just for you to think about. Yeah, that's really good. Um, one question that I had is um, when I'm on the road, say that this is already, um, I'm already traveling and this is picking up. Um, I'm just wondering how am I going to be able to keep this going where I can actually continue to help people and make money doing it while I'm traveling. I know, like, um, if it's internet based, of course, that makes it location independent, but um, I'm kind of thinking of, like, Chris Belbo and what he does. Like, he works in, like, um, early morning hours or whatever he has to do to, like, accommodate people that he works with. But um, in terms of health information, I'm just wondering how limited it's going to be and if it, I'm really going to be able to make that work while I'm traveling, too. Like, um, if I'm going to need to do, like, some kind of information products or things of that nature. Um, I don't know, what are your suggestions there? Like, since you travel a lot and you work with people, um, what do you do that works? Yeah, well, I um, I learned, I I traveled while I was starting Adventure Sauce up, mm -hmm. and it was, it was really, really tough, you know? I'm not traveling now, and I'm getting a lot of work done. So I basically, I stopped traveling, and I, I am now I'm building on Adventure Sauce. And I know for a lot of people, like, the first year, like, it's, it's tough. It's a lot of work. You're building something from nothing, and you're probably learning a lot of new skills. So I know I would, I would travel less, you know? Like, whatever job you're working on now, I feel like is a perfect opportunity to start building this, you know? You're probably researching this stuff on your weekends at night anyways. Yeah, every so, night. <laughs> so there you go. So now you'll start, you know, like, adding into your routine an hour you know, where you like write a post once a week or twice a week, you know, and so you're, you're adding that in now and you're starting to build it up. But then once you're traveling, what a lot of people do is they factor in that they're, that they're working. Um, so, you know, like your travel is a little bit different. Um, you know, it's not going to be like you're off for six months and just traveling around completely like without, uh, you know, a tether, you know, like yeah. Yeah, maybe you can do that. <laughs> If your blog is going up well, you know, maybe for a week, you don't have to check in that much. But you're now factoring in, you know, like what I visualize it as like having some time every day that I'm working on my project and then at night um, or maybe like the, for half of the day if, I, if I've worked hard enough that I've kind of like gotten ahead of everything, now I'm spending half of my day hanging out on the beach in Thailand, you know, and then the next morning I'm getting up and writing, I'm working, I'm doing my thing and then I'm off kind of doing my thing. So I, I know that people do it depending on their personality, like figuring out like what do you, how do you want to do it? Um, and then deciding, basing your model around how you want to do it. For me, I, I want to have something to work on. You know, I get just kind of, I've done the free thing and I just get kind of out there, you know? It's like <laughs> I like to be making something and working on this stuff. Um, yeah, I like you, a little structure. <laughs> you can, you can, so, so with that, it's like building the model and building your business around the way that you want to live. Thinking about that, the fact that you're thinking about it now is great. And as you're looking at these people, look at the different ways that they structure their business too and decide, think about which ways you would like to structure your business. Like how much interaction do you want to have? Do you want to be a coach all the time where you're always like meeting with one person and you... Um, you charge, you know, like $100 an hour or something like that. So you get a lot of money per hour, but, you know, it, it has to be you. Or do you want to write an ebook and sell it for like $4 or $5 or $10 and sell it to a lot of people? Or do you want to do a course? There's a bunch of different options for you. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. That's, uh, that's, that's a great question. What about, uh, do you have other questions about when you're traveling, how to, to, to run your business? Um, May have lost her again, folks. We did lose her. What about you guys? Oh, she's back. <laughs> 
There we go. All right. Well, we can hear you, and we see a nice snowflake. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, no, that's okay. I didn't have any more questions about traveling right now. Um, I guess I will as things develop over a year or so. But one yeah. thing that I'm struggling with now is besides um, finding that good central thing that I think you really helped me hone in on um, is getting the content out there. Um, once I really figure out what I'm going to do, I guess, like, just getting the blog up and going, because I haven't done that yet. I'm just, like, trying to um, get a good idea, find a focus, identify, like, what makes me different, and then use that and just go and then start writing and then develop it all from there. That way I'm not really backtracking or, like, wasting time trying to figure out what, I'm, what image I'm really trying to put out there to the rest of the health community. Yeah. So I guess my question is, once you had the idea for Adventure Sauce and you knew what your identity was and what you were going to do, mm -hmm. how did you decide what content you were going to launch first and how you were going to do it, mm -hmm. when you were going to do it? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a great question, too. Um, well, what... Let me think back. You know, so what did I do? I just... I didn't have, like, a really specific plan to start off. I chose five posts that I felt like I could write um, and that that I had ex expertise on that would be good posts and I, I put those on Adventure Sauce and then I launched that video that was my way that I was going to attract a lot of traffic at first to the yeah. site. Um, so when you're thinking about I don't necessarily feel like you have to plan it out too far ahead. Um, okay. I think that you have this a good idea having your differentiation point um, that what makes you different is one of the most important factors that you can do and you can change it later on um, but you might not be able to change it as much if you already have the domain name and it's just going to be tricky so it's you, you have some time so you it's smart to figure out exactly the direction you're going Right. Um, so I feel like putting time into that is definitely worthwhile. And then once you know which direction you're going, I would come up with 5, 10, 20, 30 posts, article topics. We may have lost her, folks. She looks kind of frozen there. But um, for you guys, I'll wait till she comes back. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? You said that was very worthwhile. <laughs> Yeah, it's worthwhile that you're working on your what a business person would call it is your unique, unique selling proposition. What makes you unique? Um, and you're also working on your brand, which is like um, what is going to kind of like be your specific things that make out how you do things. You know, adventure right. sauce. You know, like there's a different, yeah, yeah. Like like you you have a brand. You you know you're at Whole Foods right now. Um, you know, you like health. There's all of those things we could go in and use words to describe how you talk, you know. So, um, so that's, that's basically what a brand is. It's just a word for describing how, how you are and how your, your project will be so people are naturally drawn to it right away. But so, I mean, honestly, what I would do is I would just write out a big list of topics you know about, sort of like, more in depth than what we did, but along the same lines. Okay. And then from that, I would choose the ones that you want to start off with, and I'd I'd go from there. Choosing um, a schedule is a uh, is a solid way to start, just so you kind of get in the habit of writing at a certain time or a certain place, um, and you start to have that kind of accountability to post on your blog once a week, twice a week, three times a week, whatever you feel like works for you. Do, 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 do. And for you guys, um, I've used note cards too to structure content. I love using note cards. Recently found that note cards are awesome. Just writing out each idea on a note card, putting it on the floor, you can move it all around, you can lump things into categories, you can, um, and this will help you get an overall structure. 
for maybe like the categories you want on the side of your, your blog. Um, or you'll know in your head, okay, I'll focus on this aspect of content this month, and then the next month I'll focus on this aspect of content. Um, and I feel like those things are nice. I'm at a restaurant, so uh, if you guys can check out the, the peeps around here. Uh, hopefully we'll get Rachel back and we can end off. Hey Amen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll um, we'll uh, I'll answer this question and then we'll uh, we'll we'll submit to the <laughs> Wi-Fi, you know, like devil who's who's on us. Yeah, that's too bad. Well, yeah, yeah. No, this has been a lot of fun. Um, but I feel like we've gotten a ton. Like this is a this is going to be a lot of work, you know. It, it yeah. doesn't seem like it, but it's going to take you some time. Yeah. But um, what I was saying with content was um, one strategy that I've been using too recently that's been really helpful is just using note cards and um, writing down like a topic idea and then putting it on the floor and then like you know just writing out a, as many as I think like specific topics I could teach and then once they're all out I'm like it's just kind of grouping them into categories and s specific areas so then you can maybe come up with some categories for your blog right away. And it's it's helpful sometimes to like have a month devoted to like one sort of topic. So because your audience might not be into everything that you write, but maybe if they're really you're talking about juicing one month. <laughs> Technology. So handy, but such a eh. You just wanna like wring its neck sometimes, right? <laughs> I was telling about how technology, how much I love it, and so sometimes I just want to ring its little neck. Oh my gosh, it's awful right now. <laughs> but yeah, that was a great idea. I can see how that would really help me figure out my ideas. Visual, yeah, that would work. <laughs> yeah. Cool, Rachel. Well, it's been a good time. I think we'll submit to the gods of the Wi-Fi, and um, but we'll let us know how it goes, and um, keep us posted. Yeah, sure. Thanks so much, Richard. Yeah. Nice connecting with you, Rachel. Yeah, Take care. Too. Have a good night. Bye. Yeah.